The uncertainty principle lies at the heart of quantum physics, and it deals with how the measurement of an observable interferes with the measurement of another observable. Consider an unknown quantum state denoted as alpha ket. As we learnt previously, the unknown state alpha ket can be expressed either in position or momentum representation, which are the wave functions psi of x and phi of p as shown. These two wave functions are related via the Fourier transformation. Their modulus square gives us the probability function, which is the probability of finding the particles in position x or location p respectively. Suppose we performed a measurement of the position x of the unknown alpha ket. The active measurement will project the unknown state onto an eigenstate of the position operator, which is represented as a function that is highly localized in space as shown. On the other hand, if we performed a measurement of the momentum instead, the active measurement will project it onto an eigenstate of the momentum operator. Contrary to the position eigenstate, the momentum eigenstate is a function that is highly delocalized in space as shown. Now, suppose you measure the position of a quantum particle, and then you measure its momentum, and then you measure its position again. The likelihood is that the second position measurement will be quite different than the first. This is because the intervening momentum measurement will collapse the state into a momentum eigenstate which is delocalized, thus erasing any memory of the outcome of the first position measurement. We therefore say that position and momentum are incompatible observables. Put in another way. If our quantum state alpha is given by one of the position eigenstate n, then the measured position will always be equals to xn. However, if we do measurement on the momentum, we will find that the momentum will be different every time we perform a measurement of the prepared quantum state. This is because a wave function localized in position is highly delocalized in momentum. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle seeks to formulate the measurement statistics formally. Consider an ensemble of n measurement of the quantum state alpha. For each prepared state alpha, we perform measurement of its position, and yields the results, x1, x2, x3 and so on as shown. The inherent probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics implies that the measured position can be different each time. We can thus compute its statistical mean and variance, herein denoted as x bar and sigma x square, as shown. In similar fashion, we can also compute similar measurement statistics for the momentum observable as shown. In what follows, we shall show that quantum mechanics stipulate that the variance in the position and momentum measurement are fundamentally constrained by the fact that they are incompatible observable. Let's first set up the stage, using the standard notations in quantum mechanics we discussed in previous videos. Consider a general quantum state, herein denoted as n ket. The momentum operator P acting on the n ket, in the momentum representation, will simply be the momentum eigenvalue P multiplied by the state function phi of P. In the position representation, the momentum operator becomes a differential operator, acting of the state function psi of x. The action of the position operator on the quantum state can also be written in similar forms in both representations. Finally, we have the well-known commutation relation between the x and p operators, which states that the two operators do not commute. Thus, there is no quantum state that are simultaneous eigenstates of the position and momentum operators. This commutation relation is a mathematical statement of the fact that x and p are incompatible observables. Check out the following videos in the same quantum mechanics playlist if you are not familiar with the basic notations and representations in quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics provide for an elegant way to compute the measurement statistics of observables. The expectation of the position operator is given by the integrated product of the probability function with x as shown, which we denote as x-bar. The expectation value of the momentum operator can also be obtained in similar fashion, herein denoted as p-bar. We remind you that x-bar and p-bar are real numbers. How about the population variance? or the standard deviation square. Recall that the standard deviation is a measure of how the individual measurements on average deviates from the mean. Mathematically, 
The variance in x can be expressed as the expectation value of the square of the position operator relative to its mean. Variance is always a positive number. Using the position representation, the end bra and ket can be written in terms of its wave function, and the position operator replaced by its eigenvalue. For more compact notations, we define the function nx as shown, allowing us to write the variance in x as the inner product of nx. Following through the same math, we can also express the variance in p as the inner product of np, defined as shown. Thus, we can write the product of the variance in x and variance in p as follows, given by the inner product of nx multiplied by the inner product of np. Making use of the cow chi schwartz inequality then requires the product of the two inner products to be larger than the modulus square of the inner product of nx with np. Denoting the inner product of nx with np to be z, we can further establish a less restrictive bound by noting that the magnitude of the complex number z must always be larger than the square of the imaginary part of z. Writing the imaginary part of z in terms of the inner product of nx with np then allow us to arrive at the key result of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which is also sometimes known as the Heisenberg-Robertson uncertainty principle. However, in most textbooks, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is expressed in terms of the x and p operators instead. The more familiar form can be easily obtained as follows. Let's state again the definition of nx and np ket. The inner product of nx and np can be evaluated as follows, while making sure we respect the ordering of the xp operator's product. The inner product of np and nx is simply the conjugate of the nx and np inner product, which can also be evaluated as shown. When we take the difference of these two inner products, the x bar and p bar product cancels, since these are just numbers and their product ordering does not matter. The terms that survive yields us the expectation of the commutation of the x and p operators. With this, we can reduce the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in its more familiar form, in terms of the commutator of x and p. Using the commutation relation of the x and p operators, we can then arrive at the most popular form of the Heisenberg uncertainty relation. In summary, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that if one were to make an ensemble measurement of the position x and momentum p of an arbitrary quantum state, the product of the variance of these two measured quantities must always be larger than h bar divided by 2. This is a fundamental property of quantum mechanics in relation to incompatible observables, and has nothing to do with measurement precision. Lastly, we can generalize the uncertainty principle to any pair of observables represented by the operators A and B as shown. If the operator's pair commutes, then the right-hand side of this inequality will be zero, which implies that it is possible to devise a quantum state where the outcome of these pair of observables can be precisely determined. Physically, this happens when the quantum state is chosen to be the eigenstate of the two observables simultaneously which is permissible by virtue of the fact that the two operators commute. Now, back to the Heisenberg uncertainty relation. We can also ask the similar question. What quantum state will yield the minimum uncertainty of exactly h bar divided by 2? As we shall see in the next few slides, a Gaussian wave function allows us to achieve such minimum uncertainty. We shall begin by introducing the mathematical form of the Gaussian wave function. Recall we can express the wave function in the position or momentum representation, denoted as psi of x and phi of p, and they are related via the Fourier transformation as shown. The explicit expression for such a Gaussian wave packet pair is given as follows, where the prefactor is chosen so it satisfy the normalization condition. Sigma is a parameter that controls the spread of the Gaussian function. First, we compute the position spread of the Gaussian wave packet. The probability function h is given by the modulus square of psi x. From this probability function, it is straightforward to compute the expectation value of x square as shown. The expectation value of x is just zero since the Gaussian packet is centered at zero. You can pause the video here if you want to inspect the math. We can show that the standard deviation in x is simply equals to sigma. Similarly, we can also determine the probability function in momentum p, given by the modulus square of phi p. 
it is more intuitive to redefine a spread of this Gaussian in P, denoted as sigma bar. Going through similar math, one can evaluate the expectation value of P and P square. You can pause the video here if you want to inspect the math. We see that the standard deviation in P is simply given by sigma bar. Thus, we see that our Gaussian packet indeed achieved the minimum uncertainty of H bar divided by 2. In summary, we explained what are incompatible observables in this video, and derived the well-known Heisenberg uncertainty principle that governs these observables pair. We further illustrate with example situations where minimum uncertainty can be achieved. In a follow-up video, we will also show how one can derive a similar uncertainty relation in Fourier transform pairs. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.